Can I just share a little bit? Um, I'll just come back next Sunday and preach, Pastor. I love you. This house is a treasure to our family, to the city, and to the nations. Just thank you for your, thank you for being receptive to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for stewarding not just a family culture, but a presence culture. Thank you for that. Thank you for giving time to the Lord and not looking at your, your watch or the clock or anything like that. Thank you for being the, found trustworthy to steward and cultivate the presence of Jesus. Uh, we, we love you. We honor your leaders, spectacular, excellent leaders who lead with excellence. lead with their heart in their hand and truly love God's presence and God's people. Uh, amen. Can we just praise the Lord for that? All right. All right. You're good, man. Thank you. You stay there, then we just we start prophesying to everybody. <laughs> Truly, when you're in this atmosphere, and I am not a prophet, I am a pastor, I know who I am, but I can give anyone the mic, and you just begin to call things out because you're in the atmosphere. You know, um, look in the Old Testament. I mean, donkeys prophesied. <laughs> um, men that were corrupt prophesied when the Spirit of the Lord came. Did not the 70 elders begin to prophesy with Moses? They were not prophets, but there's something that takes place internally when we're around the presence of the Lord. Amen? All right, so I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of my word today. Um, all right. 2 Timothy 1. Oh, man. I have so much to share. <laughs> I, I didn't know what series you guys were on. I asked Pastor George um, after the Lord had already given me this word. And to my surprise, it, it is exactly what I want to share with you today. Um, and so I just want to share literally for a few moments because there is another church that comes in so I want to be respectful I want to give everyone time to clean up whatever but just give me like 15 minutes and I want to share um, briefly on deception I want to share about deception and how to stay rooted and, and, and grounded in God's word you ready first Timothy 1 13 through 14 NLT version says hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me a pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully, this is a key word here, carefully guard the precious truth. How many know that God's word is precious truth? It's precious. That has been entrusted to you. I believe that our hearts in the hour that we're facing and living as a church our hearts are required more than ever to be anchored in his word. Our, our soul, as the book of Acts would call it, our souls must be anchored. The church is and has been for some time at the crossroads. The crossroads that we are in and we are facing is, do we hold on to God's word? which is the full revelation of Jesus Christ. Or do we take the wide path of success? Do we take the narrow path of Jesus or do we enter through the wide path or the wide gate of success according to the world's definition 
of what success is. I can't even begin to tell you, um, and some of you have, are older than me, some of you maybe have been in church longer than me. I just turned 35 Monday. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, but I cannot begin to tell you from when, I, from when I can remember and comprehend things, the amount of people that have taken the road of success over the road that was less traveled, which is the narrow one. Most of what we call success is a contradiction to the word of God. And so more than ever, I, I, I want to charge you this morning to be grounded, to be rooted in the word of God. It's, the Bible says it's the, it, it's, it's the precious truth that has been passed or has been entrusted to you. The very truth that you and I have received has been passed from generations to generations, and it will continue to pass from generation to generation. But I am believing this. As scary as it is, and as alarming as it is for me to state this, here's what I believe is happening. I believe that we are one generation away from truth becoming extinct. I believe God is, is, is charging challenging and within that correcting a generation of churchgoers, believers, um, so-called disciples to hold dear to the teachings of the word of God. Um, and I wish I really had more time to unpack this, um, but the truth that has been passed from one generation to the next is being attacked right before our very eyes. Some of it is being attacked by current culture, current pop culture, postmodern culture, the world we live in, hear this. But a lot of that truth is being attacked internally. The church is eating the church. The only way that this happens is because of what Jesus says in Matthew 24, or, or um, excuse me, what Jesus says, I believe, is in Matthew 10. That there are there are there are many that would look like sheep, but they're wolves. They're wolves in what clothing? Sheep's clothing. Do you notice that the connotation there is that he did not say that they're wolves in shepherd's clothing. He said they are wolves in whose clothing? Sheep clothing. Why? Because not that it cannot exist. But there, there are more sheep that are deceptive than shepherds that are deceptive. I know you didn't want to hear that because you're a sheep. But that's the truth. Jesus did not say that shepherds are going to come and they, or wolves are going to come dressed as shepherds. Wolves will come dressed as sheep. Do you know that in the natural, sheep don't follow shepherds. Sheep follow sheep. Sheep do what other sheep do. They flock together because that's, that's what they do. It's the reason why sometimes they're easily deceived because naturally sheep are considered to be dumb. Now, we're not believing that in the spiritual. Obviously, we know what John 10 says, right? The sheep hear my voice. They know me. They respond to me. But speaking naturally, sheep follow other sheep. And so there's a lot of attacks that are happening internally because we're looking to one another. And we're not against that. We're, as a shepherd myself, as a senior leader, we encourage fellowship. We encourage this, this koinonia. We encourage community. We want it. I mean, small groups, life groups, whatever you want to call it. I mean, coming here, doing life together. But ultimately, we cannot look to each other for truth. There's only one source of truth, and his name is Jesus. And so many times we don't see eye to eye, and that's okay. We're not meant to always see eye to eye, but we're always meant to look at the word and let that filter the success of our relationships. We don't look at each other. We don't behold each other. We behold him. Ultimately, we become like him. We don't become like each other. And this happens when we have a misconception of the scriptures and of the Godhead. 
the body is eating the body. There are ravenous wolves that have been loosed in the body of Christ. We are in war with an enemy. Yes. Obviously, it's the devil. It's Satan. We get that. But the enemy that I'm talking about, it's the enemy of truth, which, which is deception. And I want you to know that deception will not cease fire. We are in the crossroads and the crosshairs of what it seems to be the raging of the nations. It's happening. And as a child of God, if you will not fight, you will die. I, I need you to know that there is God has graced you for this time. I am believing we are in a time of Esther for a time such as this. You've come up into the kingdom. I believe we're, if we're still here 10, 15, 20 years from now, we're going to tell the stories of how we have overcome, you know, COVID, the pandemic, the war, and it, all these things that maybe you've heard of from those that came before you. But uh, here's the thing. Eventually, you will be the ones that they'll say they came before me. You will be on the other side of the receiving end. Does this make sense? We are in a fight, and we will either fight or we will die. Now, one of the greatest ways that the truth is being attacked internally, because I, I need you to understand, if attacks come from the outside, they're easily detectable. You can know them. You can detect them. But it's hard to detect and discern when there is internal attacks happening. This is what you call battles within a war. Everyone sees the big war. They don't see the small battles that have already been stirred up for years until a big war has been released throughout the land. And I want you to know this because one of the greatest ways that truth is internally attacked is by the famous word that we all know, that we all know as offense. Offense. Matthew 24, 10. The offense. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will deceive. What did it say? Many people. Is, there, uh, is that 10? Can we go to 11? Or is, is, is that 10? Huh? That's it? That's both of them. Okay. So I want you to say, and many will turn away. So somebody say many. many. They will turn away from who? From Jesus. And betray and hate who? Why? Because when we turn away from him, the secondary consequence is fighting each other. Here's the thing. You can do conferences, team building activities. Nothing unite, unites the church more, the body more than looking at him. So whatever gimmicks we have that we're trying to copy in corporate America won't work in the church. We're getting our strategies from Chick-fil-A corporate. We're not getting it from the word. And can I tell you that, that, would, that what could work for the corporate world would not work for the church because we're a spirit being. You know, you're not getting it. We're a spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Now, they are as well. But the essence of what they're doing is the devil leaves them alone. There is strife that's being stirred up. And when we turn from the Lord, we will ultimately betray each other, hate each other. And many false excuse me, prophets will appear and will deceive how many people? Many people. Now, I want to give you the Greek word for many here. The Greek word for many is polis which means much, many, often, but it also means mostly or majority. That's alarming, especially that, that the last tail end of this word in the Greek, it's majority. Think of it this way. Jesus is saying that many or mostly or the majority of people who follow me will be offended. That's okay because Jesus said it, right? What's not okay is for you to live and operate through offense. We'll all be offended. 
You choose to stay there. It's a decision. Mostly all people will be found in offense. All people who walk with Jesus will be found in offense. And sometimes we don't know that we're offended until the word of God, which is God's greatest exposure, comes to us and reveals these things. Matthew 24, 11 says, false prophets will deceive many. I want you to see that. Will deceive many. Who are the many that will be deceived? The many who are offended. It's all there in the text. Many will be offended. Many will walk away from the Lord. And false prophets will deceive the many. Who are the many? Those who are offended. Can I tell you that deception does its excellent work through those who are offended? Deception works best through offended people. Obviously, deception comes through many avenues, but the most famous one is through offense. Most people don't know that they're walking around offended because they feel that they have the right to justify what they're feeling. And so they can justify the sentiment, the feelings, because what they went through is legitimate. So what they do is they legitimize the offense without recognizing that they're walking in it. It's to say, I, I did go through that. You don't understand. They did say that to me. Although that could be true, the decision to stay at that place and live and think and operate and gauge your relationships through that, it's unhealthy. Ultimately, it will leave you prone and as a target to deception. It could have been true what happened. But you're being deceived. You know, I've never in all my years of pastoring and leading people, and I've been into so many counseling sessions, I've never had someone come in and say, Pastor, I'm being deceived. Pastor, I'm living in deception. That really, actually, that's never happened to me. So uh, I'm praying it does one day. I pray people want this. Here's the thing about this. Deception is so subtle, so crafty, so cunning, so slimy, that you don't know when you're being deceived. See, you can know when you're sinning, when you're living in habitual secret sin. You, 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 you can know when you're arguing, when you're in disagreement with someone. All these things that you can detect, deception is not easily detectable. You can be being, you can be deceived. You are being deceived or you can be deceived and not even know it. And it's blatantly right before our very eyes. But they don't recognize it. Why? Because deception is almost truth. It's almost truth. Well, if it's almost true, it is a lie. And so what deception does is it disguises itself as something that could be true. But the nature of it is a lie. When you're hurting, you're a target for deception. The enemy does not just want you hurting. He wants to destroy you. How does he do this? By deception. He knows that ultimately he can not one-on-one -on -one defeat you. But he can, through the filters of culture, cause you to step into deception. Hear this. Because if he can deceive you, he can ultimately legally defeat you. The enemy loves to use against you the moments where you feel like God has left you out. He loves to use against you the moments where you feel like you've missed out on God. Or God, for some apparent reason, has left you out of the equation. And the enemy uses that so that ultimately, and you don't even know it. Can I say it? You are ultimately offended with God. And you won't blatantly come out and admit it. But you'll sit there, you'll serve on a team, you'll, you'll usher, you'll greet, you'll even preach. I was on that end before. I was preaching, but I was in disillusion with God. Hope has been deferred according to what I was going through. I was preaching about Jesus, and I didn't believe that he can do these things. 
And if you've ever been there, you would know it's true. You prayed for God to heal a loved one, and instead of healing them, they passed away. And in your grief, you've been deceived because you've been offended that God did not do the very thing that you took him at his word to do. And the enemy creeps up and uses moments where you feel like God did not do it. And you're living offended. And now you're starting to have some unbelief. Why? Because deception is the seed bearer of unbelief. Deception is the seed bearer of unbelief. Therefore, deception has to do with a belief system. Deception is demonized faith. It's you trusting in other things. And the enemy loves to use this whenever you feel like God did not back you up. Offended people are all around us. Not just offended at each other, offended at God. Some of you are living in hopelessness. You've prayed, you've waited on God, and things did not happen. What do you do when what you expect contradicts what you experience? That disappointment has caused you to be offended. And because now you're offended, you've become an easy target for deception. Hurting people are a target for the enemy called deception. You know, the many people who have left the Lord, who have walked away from Jesus, who have changed their whole theology on what they believe, people who have encountered the Lord, have heard the Lord, have been touched by the Lord, have preached his word, have discipled people, and they've walked away from the Lord and have, and, and have gone to other cults or other false religions, I promise you, deeply embedded in their soul, they are offended at, at God. Can I take it a little bit further? Most of what people call church hurt is actually God hurt. They're hurt by God. Did God hurt them? No. Life did. And now they've been deceived. Now they've been hurt. And now they're running to counterfeit things to get some temporary satisfaction. There are people in this room I just hear the Lord say, you've gone through to, to psychics to know about your future, know about your life. You've sought out witchcraft and the occult and black magic and witch doctors to help you with a legal case, to help you with someone who's sick in your family. You've had them read your palm, read your hand. Why? Because you're being deceived because somewhere, somehow, you were hurt. But you're in church, which is amazing. Keep on coming. But you got to come to grips with that hurt that you are, but you are offended at God. And you've opened doors that now need to be closed. It's deception at its finest. The beautiful thing is that even though you've opened those doors, Jesus has come today to speak to you. He's not intimidated by the doors that you've opened. He says, I am the door. And even in your mess and even in your deception and even in, in your offense, he's there. I'm pressed on time. Matthew 24, 23, 25. Just go there really quick. There it is, Matthew 24, 23, 25. If anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, here's the Messiah, or points, there he is. Don't fall for it. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. I thank God. We were talking about this. Day. I thank God that we, churches like Ignite, have a really short list of preachers. Thank God I'm on it. Their impressive credentials, look what I got, look what I did, and bewitching performances. That's witchcraft. 
will pull the wool over the eyes of even those who ought to know better. But I've given you fair warning. Don't be fooled, church. I believe that one of the greatest signs of the rapture and the second coming of Jesus is not just going to be what we're seeing happen on the earth. I believe one of the most greatest signs that it's going to usher in the coming of the Messiah is that there will be a strong performance of signs, miracles, and wonders. But don't get excited. These miracles, signs, and wonders are actually going to be demonic in nature. It is easy to deceive someone if they've received healing, but it was not by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you know that the devil has power to heal, but he's not the power to heal? You can actually go to a psychic and they can actually give you legitimate information. They tap into that information, but it was not by the spirit of God. It's not how you get it, it's who gave it to you. Y'all missed it. It's not, it's who gave it to you, who told you that. There'll be many false messiahs. And can I tell you that it's rare that you'll see anyone say blatantly, I am Jesus, I am the Messiah, although it's happened. And those people who have done it, they're no longer here. They've died, plagued. And you don't got to say these things to know that it's happening all around the world. But in our churches, it's happening today. Don't be fooled. There can be miracles, signs, and wonders, but it is wrapped in deception. Their gifting is not making room for Jesus. It's making room for them. What is birth? What is birth from deception can only be sustained through manipulation. I'll say it again. What is birth from deception can only be sustained through manipulation. And the end will always lead to destruction. If deception started it, manipulation must sustain it. Find me people that are deceived. I'll show you people who have been manipulated. Ultimately, if there's no repentance and coming back to the Lord, it will lead to destruction. I'm done with this verse. Mark 4, 16 through 17 out of the message translation. And some are like the seed that lands in the gravel. When they first hear the word, they respond with great enthusiasm. They're excited. God don't want you excited. Hear me. He wants you transformed. But there is such shallow soil of character that when they are, when the emotions wear off, because they will, and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. I believe many have overestimated the excitement of the experience, but they have underestimated the accountability of the experience. Can I say that even as we have come back from Matrix Retreat, some of your emotions that were on a hundred have come down. And although your emotions can wear, can wear off, the marking and the branding of the Lord that took place at that retreat will not wear off. There is some deepening in your root system that took place. And when you know that you know that you are marked by the Lord, that when times of adversity come, and it will, and when times of crises come, and they will, you have something to show for it. You're found faithful. Because we've not underestimated the accountability of the experience. What I experience, what I encounter in God should teach me to hold fast to what's true. Teach me to hold fast to what's pure. That, that is excellent. Come on. Avoid falling into dangerous error. If you're doubtful, it's probably not the Lord. If it doesn't match and align up to script, Holy Scripture, discard it. I am telling you more than ever, this is a time to be grounded or anchored in the Word of God. 
We can all have an exciting gathering, but it'd be shallow from Monday to Saturday. There is a deepening and a calling to step into Scripture again. If there are more jokes that they're in, than there is Bible verses on a pulpit, I don't want it. We need word. We need the scripture. It's time to come back to the first love of the scriptures. I don't just want an experience. I don't defeat deception with an experience. I defeat deception with it is written. Not just reading black words on a, right, on a white page. This is Jesus. He is the word. John 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He is the embodiment of what we read. We need to come back to scriptures. We need, we need holy gatherings again where the word of God is released. And I get it. Sometimes we can't even preach as such today. I'm rushing through it, but there is a demonstration of the holy word of God. You can feel the fear of the Lord and the reverence of God in a house. I don't want to be where God is not reverenced and God is not feared. I don't want to step on here and just perform on Sundays. I become a false messiah when I do that. I'm not him. I am beholding him with the ultimate goal to become conformed to the image of the Son of God. But I am not there. We do not graduate from the word. We don't graduate from presence. We need him. And my prayer and my exhortation today to you is that you would pray, God, keep me poor in spirit. I want to be, I am that poor man, Psalm said. The poor man cried out and God heard. I am the poor man. I'm the one that called out and God heard him. There's something about proximity. Come on. You can't get it on Google. You go on Google. You can't get it on YouTube. You don't get it at a conference. You don't get deeper at a conference. That, that, that's a surface touch. You get deeper in lifestyle and how you live and how you cultivate and how, ultimately how you steward what you've experienced. I have a high concern for the body of Christ today. Thanks be to God for houses as such that guard truth that has been passed from generation to generation. And God's ultimately going to hold us all accountable for what we have passed down to the next generation. Would you stand this morning? Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, I thank you. I pray that your word in this short amount of time, God, your word would permeate us, would ground us, would root us. I pray in Jesus' name that we would not relent, that we would not walk away from you, Lord, that you would deal with the offenses in our heart, that you would guard us from the, the, the deceptive ways of this world, of culture, of the enemy, that we would stand in the presence of your son Jesus, blameless, righteous, with integrity, with character. I pray, oh God, that you would raise up your church to fall in love again with scriptures, with the word, that you would do a deep, deep pruning in the church, Lord. Remove what's not there to make us fruitful. Thank you that you love us and you care for us. And we bless you this morning, Lord, for what you have done here today we would see the results of it even after this gathering god as you're deepening our faith to pass this ancient truth of old to the next generation in jesus name come on give them praise